Hello, my name is Nina Reeves from Stuttering Therapy Resources. Together with my co-author, Dr. Scott Yaris, we provide content that aligns with our mission to help our speech language pathology colleagues help those who stutter and their families. We want to make sure that you follow us on social media so you won't miss all of our resources and information for speech language pathologists and families of those who stutter. In this video, I'll be discussing the hot topic of disclosure for people who stutter. Sit back and enjoy, and don't forget to hit subscribe so you'll never miss when we have new content. So hello everyone, my name is Nina Reeves from Stuttering Therapy Resources. I'm a private practitioner and public school specialist in stuttering, and I'm here to talk to you today about disclosure. It is one of the hot topics that we get asked about all the time from our colleagues. Lots of people write in. We write a lot about this topic and we have an entire sections in our chapters of our clinical guides on it. Um, one of the things that I want to start us off with when we speak about disclosure is that our role as clinicians is to understand what's behind the desire to hide stuttering. Why do our students sometimes try to, as one of my students calls it, keep it under wraps? What is that motivation? And we have to try to figure that out with the students or the clients that we're working with and then meet them where they are. Um, we know that the desire to hide may be strong in some of our kiddos. It makes sense sometimes when we think about what are they trying to do? Our kids have told us they're trying to not have that fear, that moment of the loss of control. They're trying to decrease their chances of being embarrassed or have one of those uh, interesting listener reactions happen to them that they're not quite sure yet how to cope with. So they're really trying a lot of self-protection in many ways. The problem is that the cost of hiding can outweigh the benefit. It's a momentary benefit, but people who stutter don't often see it that way unless there's someone in their corner who can help them, that's us, uh, figure out that the cost over time can be great. So let's talk about a couple of the costs. One of the things that um, we notice when students hide their stuttering is that the opposite of what they intended starts, starts to happen. Sometimes they can actually increase their shame and their guilt about their stuttering. They can have more negative self-perceptions about themselves as communicators. And of course, we see it decrease their authenticity, their connections with other people, their ability to handle communication in those social situations when they really want to talk. And so the hiding actually does the opposite of what it was intended at the beginning. So we want to talk about that cost and start to help kids realize that disclosure, being more open about their stuttering can actually help them in the long term. And of course, we're the guides. We have to be there to help them with very individualized plans to get them ready to have more openness about their stuttering. Now, before I go into the options and some of the levels of disclosure, I wanna make this caveat. Number one, not all people who stutter want to hide their stuttering, okay? At least not all the time. So it's not like everyone has to be on a disclosure plan. You have to, again, individualize. Um, we want to give them some options. And these are things that we can then choose from. The things I'm gonna talk about next are brief and not an exhaustive list. I'm gonna give you a few examples of some of the things that um, I have done with some of my students and Scott Yaris, my co-author um, and partner in Stuttering Therapy Resources. We talk about this a lot. I'm gonna give you a few of those ideas to get you started. First of all, 
students who stutter can start by showing their stutter. Some kids might not be willing to show their stutter first. They'd rather just comment on their stutter. So again, this is not a programmed approach. This is an idea that the, it's like a disclosure menu. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna pick up, this is from my office. This is our disclosure menu that my students have come up with over time. And we continually put it on the wall and they get to add to it and give ideas and things that have worked for them so they can share it with their community of other kiddos who stutter. So it's okay to have a disclosure menu. Here are some examples. Um, I'm gonna tell you about showing stuttering. When kids are ready to show some stuttering, and some kids could care less and they'll show their stuttering every day, which is great, but some kids are trying to hold it back or at least hold it back in certain situations. When they're getting ready, to show their stuttering, we have to we have to find out. Are you ready to show some clean, honest stuttering? One of my students calls it honest stuttering, which I think is so cool because it is. It's my real stutter. Here it is in all its glory. Take it or leave it. This is what it is. Um, other kids may not be ready to show their honest stutters, and they may want to do some pseudo stuttering or some voluntary stuttering to help decrease that fear and sort of put it out there um, in their own, on their own terms, as we say. Another idea is to acknowledge it. Some of my kids in very varied ways, oh my gosh, they have so many ideas. Some of my children just say, oof, big stutter there, or wow, that was a good one. They might even comment with a little bit of humor, not humor at themselves, but humor with the situation. Um, and other kids just say, wow, my stuttering is big today, or they just comment on their stutter and it makes them say it out loud, disclose it, but without a 20 minute discussion on it, right? Um, of course, discussing stuttering with, with people that they love in hierarchies of difficulty, educating others on stuttering. We write exponentially about putting children in situations where they write a listener letter and send it to their teacher every year where they can do a classroom presentation on stuttering and there's many resources to help us as clinicians learn how to develop that with students there are many ways to discuss and educate and we have to partner with that student or that client to find out the ways that they're ready to do it and then there is advertising, which is actually saying out loud, um, I'm a person who stutters. I had one student just recently say, I'm a person who stutters. So while I'm presenting today, if you see that, that's what it is. I'm not nervous, I just stutter. It took a while to get that up to that speed along a hierarchy of difficulty, but those are varied ways in which students can disclose. We want to help them lead up to that by giving them some ideas about the facts about stuttering. Sometimes it's not feeling like I'm ready to disclose my stuttering because I don't understand it. I'm still feeling pretty embarrassed about it. How about helping them learn the facts about stuttering so that they can feel like uh, they are less shameful or guilty about their stutter. We want to explore with them in, in different ways what their speaking fears are and how we can help them learn to handle those speaking fears, to approach them and to get ready for them so they don't continue to back away from communication. We can do this through role playing those potential roadblocks. If you have a a student who stutters, who's afraid of listener reactions, role play some listener reactions and what they fear the most and do it in a safe and supportive environment of the therapy room to get them ready to take these things on the road. There's so much more we could say about disclosure. Just know that over time, it is what, uh, what can help students actually decrease their fear, decrease their avoidances, and in decrease their, their, their struggle and their tension and their fighting with their stutter. 
And of course, the ultimate goal is to increase that authenticity, that spontaneous communication, where they feel free to say what they want to say, create an environment where it's safe for them to say what they want to say, whether they stutter or not. Thanks so much for listening. Check out our other resources.